Good morning, everyone. Today's session of Echo Voices is with assistive wear. Pam and Barbara are joining us to discuss assistive wear, uh, their proliquo and proliquo coach. Ladies, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to you. Okay. I'm going to maybe stop sharing. <laughs> I'm so happy to see I'm the only one sometimes struggling with technology. Okay, thank you, Cassandra, for introducing us and thank you for having us here. So I will share my screen. Um, let's see, you can see my screen. We can see it. Cool. Let's move you around for a little bit. Uh, so today we're going to talk about Proloco and actually also Proloco Coach. And Proloco is a new AC app designed with teachers and teachers in mind. Um, but before we do that, let us introduce ourselves. So my name is Barbara van het Westende. And as you may hear, my sound is that I'm not from the US. I'm actually from the Netherlands. I'm a speech therapist in the Netherlands, um, working for assistive wear for almost seven years now, uh, working very closely with Pam. And before I joined Assistive Wear, I worked as a speech therapist on a school for special education in the Netherlands for over 20 years. So AEC was always part of my agenda and part of the things that I was doing during the day. Pam. Well, I'm Pam Harris, and I've been working for Assistive Wear for nearly 14 years now, supporting AAC users, parents, and professionals. Outside of Assistive Wear, I'm the parent of an adult AAC user. Um, and it's really my pleasure to be here today with Barbara to share some, I hope, interesting and helpful information. Our goals for today are to um, help you understand how ProLoquo meets the needs and challenges of teachers and educators. We'd like for you to have a better understanding of how ProLoquo is suited for education and understand how ProLoquo supports grammar and literacy. I think it's important at this moment to just pause and say what we're going to be talking about is not ProLoquo to go, which has been around for more than a decade and many people are familiar with, but rather our newest AAC app, ProLoquo. Um, this is also, I think, an important presentation for parents to watch. Uh, so they're aware of the features of ProLoquo and ProLoquo Coach and how these two apps support their students, their children in the classroom. Um, Barbara's going to share a short video, um, three minutes, and it provides an insight or maybe even an answer to the question, why access to AAC is essential for education? Barbara? Yes. Jay, I need the phone. I'll give it right back. I'll give it right back. Y'all ready? Jay and Nick are identical twins diagnosed with autism. And Nick, when he turned three, he was saying a couple of words. Jay was not speaking. And when they were five, they they were separated at kindergarten. Do you want to do a sunset? Yeah. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Or what are you going to do? All right. Sunset. Are you going to do a sunset? Do you yeah. Yeah. I know what's going to be. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like the sunset. Oh, so what colors? What colors do you need? Nick went into a mainstream class with non-disabled peers, but because Jay didn't talk, um, he was immediately segregated and placed in a self-contained classroom. Palette. Right here. I often say that I was witnessing an unfortunate science experiment because I would send both of my kids to school in the same outfit, on the same bus, the same school, but then when they got home, Nick, he would have books from the library. He would have artwork that he had done during the day. And Jay would come home with nothing. And 
The only difference was that Nick was able to prove what he was learning and NJ was not. The gap between what the two of them knew, their knowledge gap and their learning gap just grew and grew and grew because Jay wasn't even being exposed to the things that Nick was being exposed to. Once Jay started using the AAC app, uh, the speech generating app, the people around him, their attitudes changed. Um, they started looking at him differently. They started teaching him more because they finally understood that he was connecting to the things he was being taught. And even though, you know, his entire body is interacting with things in a different way than we do, once he started pressing those buttons, finally they were able to say, okay, well, let's keep going. Look, they're waiting for a wave. They're waiting for a wave. They're gonna get a wave. There, look, he's riding it. He's riding the wave. You see him? Look, he's riding the wave. Okay, <clears throat> that was the video of G. Um, if you look at today's classroom, um, there are a few things that we often hear teachers tell us. Um, technology is a familiar tool to our students, but sometimes using AC in a classroom can feel like daunting. It's not very, yeah, it's, it feels strange. Um, they ask questions, why is this display look different than the other one? Um, where are the words that match the concepts that I'm teaching? And it can be frustrating to plan a lesson only to realize that the language you need isn't in the device. So we all heard the concerns and did a lot of research and talked to a lot of teachers. And we actually reviewed like 10 plus years of data um, to look at language and learning. And as a, def a result of that, we developed for local and for local coach. But first, before we dive in, I have a question for you. What challenges do you have with AEC in your classrooms? Can you share some of the challenges that you see or experience? Or... I obviously don't work in a classroom, but I hear tons of things from the classrooms. And definitely the teachers don't know how to incorporate it into their, you know, daily structure that's what I've heard yeah. mostly and then they don't have the time to or the resources yeah. to spend trying to learn it right and yeah. then of course they have all these different kids and it seems to be getting um more and more prevalent and they all have different different devices and different programs Right. And so then the teacher has to learn all of this. I see That's some people I... nodding. So, yeah. I think it's recognizable. Uh, let's go a little bit into what educators say about AC. Um, so, some insights from the users' uh, research. And Cassandra, the things that you said, those are also the things that we hear. So, you. It's, I think it's almost general over the world that we hear the same um, challenges. And what we also see is that from the inside of our user research that AEC devices and apps are hard to learn. Um, there's a high staff turnover, so it makes it hard to train or to be trained on AEC. Uh, in many classrooms, every student has a different or different configured AEC system. So it makes modeling really hard, for example, and um, training classroom teams and paraprofessionals is therefore difficult. And AC systems often lack essential academic vocabulary. So how do we address these things? So if we look at AC systems are hard to learn and yet easy to mess up because that's also what we see. Proloquo has a swallow hierarchy and a fixed motor plan. 
Uh, it has a single crit size that you can change. It has a fixed base vocabulary and it makes Proloquo unbreakable. So you can change the crit size. You can add personal vocabulary. You can remove words that are in the grid, but you can add your own personal words. <clears throat> Um, if we look at the fact that parents and teachers often lack knowledge and feel overwhelmed when starting AEC, um, for local is easy to learn and use with relatively small grid size. Um, there's actually 24 7 personal help within a few hours within for local coach, which is the companion app that comes with for local. Um, and there is AEC best practice coaching for communication partners with for local coach. And the AC systems are not designed for language learning and education. Well, actually, Proloquo has 16,000 words for all ages organized in ways that support language learning. And they have four times as many curriculum words as other AEC apps. Pam. Um, <clears throat> please allow me to move forward and begin our presentation. We want to explore how Proloquo is designed to accommodate the needs of schools, both teachers and students. And then we're going to go a little bit into how Proloquo supports full participation of AAC users in the curriculum while making teaching easier. The new Proloquo is friendly. It's a non-overwhelming design. What you see on the screen that Barbara is sharing is the home screen. Yet embedded in this is super efficient access to a rich set of words. We developed a tool and measured, and I can tell you that it takes an average of 1.6 taps per word to build phrases. So it's a minimal configuration. That's the grid size. It's easy to navigate design, which we will be demonstrating. It's a consistent motor plan. It has four times the vocabulary of any other app. And its inclusion of curriculum words sets it apart from any other app. Okay. Barbara's going to share her iPad now. It's going to take her just a second to set this up. Yes, She's because going... I can show it so, but I don't. we don't have a sound now. So I will switch to another screen. But go ahead, Pam, sorry. So <laughs> what we want to show you an actual demonstration of is how the vocabulary, the core vocabulary, remains in a consistent location that it has something included called related words that expands your options and offers this richness. There's grammar options that are immediately, Hi. instantly available. Okay. And then we're going to go into some curriculum vocabulary uh, to use with from basic to very complex concepts. Ready, Barbara? Yeah, yeah, true. So actually, you, know, you are now looking at the home screen of Proloquo. Um, and you will find a lot of four words on the first screen. And you will find some I. I. You will find some tabs on the top. And if you tap a tab, for example, the yellow one, you go into the folder, you will see that a part of the four words, which we call the static core, will stay the same and are the same on every, I. every in every folder. And on actually every spot within Proloquo. But also, if I go back to the home screen and I tap the verbs, you will see that this one stays the same. So there is a no. fixed motor plan and all the words are in one spot within the system. Within Proloquo, you can add a folder in a folder, but you can't add a folder in a folder in a folder in a folder, which makes the uh, vocabulary easier to learn and easier to remember where the words actually are. Um, ben already talked about Let's go into feelings, for example, right. and the word happy. There are some related words. So you will find the word happy as a symbol and a word, but I can change that to, let's say, cheerful, cheerful. Or I can say fulfilled, fulfilled or glad. Yeah. So every word within yeah. for loco has a related word. So go, you can change into drive, drive. or fly. fly. And this also encourages literacy. So 
it's the first step in print. You can search for specific words, you can listen to it, and you can replace it in the in the sentence bar. Um, the other thing about the more the, the curriculum vocabulary is within the folders, you'll find folders, for example, about literacy. Literacy, sorry for my pronunciation. And within that folder, you will find all the words for actually for literacy, to talk about literacy, to talk about a page, to talk about a chapter, about a phrase, a sentence. But you will also find the letters here or the keyboard. Talking about grammar, that's also what you said, Pam. So if we tap the word like, like I can like. change it like or like. Likes. Or like. Like. So there's no automatic inflection, but you can change it to ever whatever you want. Um, anything else that I need to show, Pam? Or shall I just switch back to the presentation? Well, let's just let's just take this moment. Does anyone it's a small enough group? Does anyone have any specific questions or something that they're confused about any clarification at this point about uh, what Barbara has just showed you. I know I definitely have some questions, but let's um, put a shout out to our audience first. Any of you ladies uh, have questions? You're muted, sir. So yes, you can go first. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I had some questions about the keyboard mm -hmm. um, as far as the features. Can you change the colors, highlight the vowels? Um, high, is there a you high can, contrast version? You cannot. And there is not at this point a high contrast version. Um, Polo Quo has been designed with what we call guardrails. Now, you know that we're also the developers of Prolo Quotigo. And we can tell you that we dug deep into the use of Prolo Quotigo um, for the past 10 years and have learned some very dismal facts. One fact is to sum it up is that a lot of people break it, make you know, kind of like, let's use the term like Frankenstein ish. Quotigo. They reduce grid sizes. They take words away. They go deep into hierarchy folder upon folder. They change colors um, without seemingly a reason for changing colors in some folders and not others. Proloquo is designed to be unbreakable. And one of the ways that it is unbreakable is that you, you cannot edit it. You cannot change it. You can add words to it. But this is how the QWERTY were uh, with word prediction. This is how it looks. And if it doesn't work for your particular student, we ask that you contact us. We will take your information. We will offer some suggestions and we will send on your reasons for looking for a change to our dev team to consider. The app has already undergone considerable changes uh, since it's been released based on feedback from users. So to answer your question, nope, can't do that. Okay. And here's why. Is there an ABC version of Indeed. Barbara, you want to show go back to the literacy folder? Yes, 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 yes. Mm -mm -mm. There you go. Can we talk about, you can talk about letters. What's a vowel? What's a consonant? What's a lowercase? What's an uppercase? All right, Sarah, you had questions? I do. Um, you had mentioned that you can add a folder, but it's like a folder inside of a folder inside of, like, what can't does do that? that. You can't mm -hmm. add anything to it. You can add lots of things to it, but you can't add a folder inside a folder inside a folder because that makes the hierarchy just too deep. So there are other ways that you can do it. For example, um, um, you're thinking about a curriculum or are you thinking about, sometimes a parent might think about um, Paw Patrol and entering in all of the episodes for Paw Patrol. And mm -hmm. so they wanna create a Paw Patrol folder and then all the episodes and make those be a folder. You can't do that. 
but we have other ways. So give me an example and I can show you how to do that. Like that's a great example of, I have a student that has a really specific movie or show that they like to watch. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing you say is I could put that inside of an existing folder. I could add that word, mm -hmm. but I'm not creating mm -hmm. additional folders so that we're not getting deeper into. That's right. That's okay. right. Because that what we've seen with Prolo Quo to go is that sometimes these folders go so far deep and then people keep adding to it and adding to it. We'll see a user who's had maybe three or four years in school and has had so many different hands adding into that vocabulary that it's become so difficult to find something. And then people are like, well, I don't know how to get to that or it's taking too long for them to navigate. Uh, you can't, that won't happen with Polo Quo. So say for example, um, Barbara, if you could, uh, Go back home. Well, actually, shall we? Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt you, Pam, because I think it's really good questions, but we I think we should move forward oh, with the presentation. Yeah. And at the end, with the case study, we can also talk about adding folders and adding words. Um, so sorry to interrupt. <laughs> this is absolutely correct. Otherwise, okay. we will take two hours, and I think people have to work today. <clears throat> so we read the demo. Here. And I think that this is back to me. So when we say that yeah. Prolo Quo for schools, that it was designed for learning. So let's expand on that a little bit. So what does it mean for schools? It's consistent. What one student's using with Prolo Quo, the other student is going to be using the same thing with Prolo Quo. Um, efficiency, customization to a student's vocabulary is automatically reflected on all the devices connected to that user. Finally, so any changes I make at home to Josh's vocabulary is going to show up on the teacher's device, on the SLP's device. Any additions that the SLP makes, everybody who's got that child's user vocabulary will see the updates. Vocabulary that matches content of the curriculum is already included and available. What does this mean? This means teachers don't have to spend any time identifying vocabulary that they need for their upcoming lesson plan. They don't have to add it or have anybody add it to the device. It's already in there. That's a pretty big statement, right? Polo Quo was designed for growth. It's a, there's no relearning. It's one single level, single grid formation, can't change it. No gatekeeping. People are not going to take words away. First grade is going to go, the first grader is going to go to second grade with the same words. Preschoolers can rely on this rich symbol supported, um, symbol support before they're even reading. And it works in elementary, middle school, and high school because there's thousands of essential curriculum words with over 12,000. So it is also designed to support the curriculum. It has more academic words than any other AA system has total words. Are you familiar with Retopia and Retopia Go? Um, if you're not, you, you should be. I think they're really great products from Don Johnson, now called Building Wings. And they're curriculum products, and they're used by special educators to provide leveled and differentiated instruction using age-respected learning materials that are all research-based. Uh, Retopia Go is for preschool through second grade. Um, the simple supported buttons in Prolo Quo provide that visual support, you know, for the dual coding. Our children learn both visually through the symbols as well as through the labels. Um, so the visual and the verbal. I went kind of fast through that, so. Now, now, okay, you've heard me say curriculum, a lot of curriculum, a lot of curriculum words, a lot of, okay, here's where we're gonna dive into this a little bit. So let's talk first about curricular support words for language, humanities, and arts, and then a little bit about um, curricular support for science, technology, 
engineering, um, and math. So Barbara is going to combine those and do a short demonstration of different curricular words that uh, show you a little bit about geography, um, a little bit about government, uh, nature, math, and science. Ready for your demo, Barbara? Oh, yes, 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 yes. I just unplugged the iPad. <clears throat> Uh, uh, oh, I rem okay. Wait, 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 wait a second. Sharing. Oh, guys, it's the end of my day. Sorry, I shared the wrong screen. <laughs> Share. You're doing great. Yes, but I'm waiting for my screen. There it is. There's for the again. So and then you were screen. talking about, yeah. So you were talking, for example, about geography, where you can go into a folder with all the landmarks which is actually pretty curriculum words. If you go to government, you can go into the military folder where you'll find all the things uh, like a soldier mm -hmm. army mm -hmm. or fort. Mm -hmm. If we go back and we go into nature, you will find folders about the weather, plants, geology or habitat. So let's go into the weather. And I can see it's quite sunny, sunny. but I know that is actually quite clearly where Sarah lives, she told us, because I'm getting that weather in the next couple of weeks. Um, another folder, which one do we want to have? Government, we have geography, then? Um, yeah, science? if you want to go Let's back go. to geography, you could show politics in government. Yes, I can do so. Government, and then we go into politics. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. the, the little navigation buttons on the bottom, mm -hmm. I know you said you can add as many mm -hmm. words. You can add mm -hmm. words. Um, is yes. there a limit to how many screens you can go? There's your blank spaces. Okay. Say, for example, you're doing a... Um, a theme or a, a lesson plan on feudalism. Barbara, you want to tap feudalism in the second column, second from the bottom? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, when you're talking about feudalism in your classroom, if you notice the related words column, feudalism appears at the top. And then in alphabetical order, you may be wanting to talk about clergy, fief, Lord, nobility, peasants, vassal. And now, Barbara, if you tap the um, right arrow, all these spaces are available to add words. And if you tap the left arrow back, all those pluses are places to add words. So they could show up right in that. Now, you'll see that there's the uh, uh, slash border X's. Those are for us. Should you say, hey, I'm doing this um, theme with my class and we're talking about politics and you don't have such and such. Well, sorry, we'll add it. So we will add it and it'll be part of the vocabulary. Okay. So when we talk a little bit more about those vocabulary concepts, you can go to the next slide, Barbara. Um, we talk about how ProLoco was designed to um, help a teacher, help an educator, um, help a therapist teach concepts. And we talk about, um, let's, let's search for the word. Oh, no, we're not connected to it again. Okay, so just move to the next slide. Thanks. 
and click there. Okay, all the basic vocabulary words, the high frequency and fringe words are symbolized. And that's an important thing for our um, emergent literacy um, students. The essential high frequency conceptual words are also symbolized. Essential subject words are symbolized. And many, many more are, really, are available as related words. Now, related words are those half-sized buttons that appear in the column after you've selected a button. And symbolized words provide the visual support for the meaning. We worked with um, the symbol sticks people on creating symbols specifically for Proloquo that more accurately or as accurately as we could depict what the meaning of the word is. Next slide. So when we talk about teaching concepts, Barbara talked a little bit about this. When you have tap happy, and you'll see those related words, happy, the word is always at the top and then alphabetically below it. You can also add related words. So say for example, um, the student is really into a, a bluey and they have a button, bluey, and they tap bluey and there's related words for bluey. You can add related words that are personal and important to that student about Bluey. So happy, we have cheerful, content, fulfilled, glad, jolly, joyful. One of those words have not yet been selected. So we'll see in the last column, the grammar column is still inflecting the word happy. So Barbara, what's the next concept? Geology. Okay, yeah. so... Here we've tapped into geology and we can talk about earthquakes, volcanoes, craters, volcano, crater, erupt, lava. Do you see how those four are related? They're almost categorically organized. So there was thought also given to that. Weathering, what happens when something, well, it erodes, it could create a landslide rock, fossil, core, mantle, crust, layers, tectonic, fault. Those are all almost categorized. Okay, so let's go to the next one. If words are repeated, and I love this example. Okay, the example orange. Orange is a color, and orange is something that you eat. In some other apps that you may be familiar with, orange will only appear one time. But that doesn't support the cognitive, developmentally important process of concepts, teaching concepts. So it will appear twice in Proloquo, once as an orange in food fruit, and once as a color, in colors. Another example is chicken. Do you remember the first time you realized that the chicken that you were eating from the bucket <laughs> on grandma's table was the same chicken that you saw at the zoo on the field trip with your classmates? It's a huge yes. concept, a huge developmental leap. And in Proloquo, it is done differently. There's a chicken with a symbol that looks like the chicken you eat and it's located in food. And then there's a chicken that looks like the animal that's in animals and birds. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about what makes Proloquo uniquely suited for education. And it's designed to teach grammar and literacy. Um, it's designed to teach grammar, so there's no automatic inflections. As we saw, and we will see in the next visual, the next slide, is that you can pick go and you can change it to going, went, etc. Uh, and the grammatical forms are always in the user's fingertips, so they can try, they can switch back to the first one they choose. Um, it's designed to teach literacy. Um, so the related words are text only. Uh, 
And the vocabulary is there to talk about letters, punctuation, books, sentence part, all those kinds of things, the ones that I showed you before in demonstration. There's access to a QWERTY keyboard with word prediction and the word prediction is learnable. Uh, and if you have a multi-line message window, so you can add all the words at one point, the images disappear and only the words will be there. But I will show you in some visuals. This is about the grammar. So if I say I go, I can change it to went. So I can, or I say, I can say I goes or I going or I gone. So you can change every inflection. You can always go back to the one before. You can actually move it around. Um, you can talk about literacy and I showed this one in the, in the demo. So the words to talk about literacy, what is a page, what is a chapter, what is a sentence, what is a part of a sentence, it's all in the vocabulary. We already talked about the keyword with word prediction, which is actually a learnable word prediction. And this is where I said before, um, the message window supports literacy. So first you have Sorry, the concept, the picture with the graphic symbol with the words. And once you add more symbols, it actually changes to a sentence. Uh, and the, the symbols disappear. And this is to support learning to read and connect text. But let's take it a little bit bigger in rethinking AAC. Because we think that Proloco is a learning tool. And Proloco can be for all English learning, English language learners. Uh, it can be for language processing disorders, students who struggle with speech, students who have episodes are uh, with episodes who are nonverbal at some points, uh, for example, due to an emotional regulation disorder. So it's not only for that one specific student. We think we can use, so you can use Proloco in your classroom for everyone. So Pam, we are 45 yes. minutes on the way, but I definitely think we need to share the next part also before we go to our case study. Oh, so yes. uh, just real I was just looking at Sarah's question. Sarah, don't forget, I, I won't forget. Sorry. I'm going to come back to that. Um, this is the second app, and this is called Proloco Coach. And what it is, is it's a companion app for Proloco. It's your in-the-pocket um connection to AAC experts 24 seven. It's your, how do I use Proloquo? It's your gateway to AAC best practices. And um, when you first open it up, you're going to see a discover screen. And at the top, are you ready to demo Barbara? Or you want me to go through this quick? Yeah. I'm ready to demo. So actually you are now looking on our phone. Okay, um, this is so the it first for local coach. Yeah, there you go. go if you look at the very top, you'll see. I have a quick question. I'm oh, just opening up this app because I got a quick question. I'm going to search. How do I invite somebody else to this team? There you go. That's how quick the search works. And you, this tells you how you can invite team members to the Proloquo vocabulary for the user. Okay, you want to learn about what? Proloquo. I'm sure you do. Okay, let's click on I want to learn more about Proloquo. You see, we have three different articles for you to look at. They're not really articles. You know what they are? They're kind of like a topic. So, Barbara, we want to add Proloquo to my day. Yeah, I'm new to AAC. What am I going to do? How am I going to get started? Oh, okay. I'm going to identify one routine. Well, that sounds pretty easy. Can I do that? Oh, look at how short that is. I can do this. Identify one routine. How can I make it easy? I want to make it easy. Think about my daily routines with my daughter, Barbara. Well, I get her up in the morning. That's always a fun time. Bring the iPad with when I wake her up. Oh, okay, I can do that. Barbara, go back to the Discover screen. And we yes, have I others. I want to get started with AAC. Make AAC always available. Build an AAC team. Could you click on that? 
Did you know that you can share Prolo Quo with everyone in the child's life for free? If the families buy a license for Prolo Quo for their child, they can share it with school. They can share it with the private therapists, the babysitter, grandparents, brothers and sisters, the cousins before the big Christmas holiday parties um, for free. Why do we do that? Because it's so important for the user that they have other people understand and are comfortable with their AAC and know what their vocabulary is. Um, if the if school buys a um, five-year uh, license for a student, they can share it with the lunchroom lady. They can share with anybody in the school environment who's interested. They can share it with the parents at home. Um, I've gone on too long. Anyway, I love Pro Local <laughs> Coach. Why? Because Barbara and I, with the help of some of our other colleagues, wrote this. And uh, we feel very, um, we think of it very in very lovingly terms. We, we poured a lot of ourselves into this, hoping that it would be something that made the AAC journey easier for others. And I think we have one more short video, but do we have time to do Otter? I think we have time to do Otter as long as we we okay. make sure we stop at the, the time that this agreement. I just want everybody to understand that Proloco is not limited to school-aged children and it's suitable for very young children. And having said that, this is Otter. I can't hear Otter, Barbara. No, you can hear Otter. Oh, yellow. Yellow, yes. Yellow, yellow. Yellow, yellow. Yellow, yellow. Yellow, yellow. Red. 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 So within the coaching app, I learned that this was not something that I could approach casually and just whip it out once in a while. What I found out was this was an entire lifestyle change where I'm going to be bringing this iPad everywhere we go. If we leave the room, I'm going to take it with me. When we go to bed, it's coming into Otter's room. Uh, we started using it anytime he was awake. And, you know, I wasn't just um, using it to talk to him. Sometimes I talked to my husband and use the app and let Otter observe what I was doing so that he could see Mom is using this app. Black. Black. Nice choice. Silver. Silver. We learned that the other day. Gray. <gasps> Gray. Yes. I'm showing him, hey, you know, this button is here and it has a picture of a flower, for instance. Or maybe we're talking about what color the flower is. We open up the folder and it shows all of the different colors. Um, and that might seem like a lot, um, but the coach app was really clear on what I needed to do, the level of dedication that it would take. And although he maybe does not seem to be responding to the iPad, maybe it seems like I'm the only one who's interested in carrying this thing around and tapping buttons. Um, what I found out is that's completely expected and that's the role that I needed to take on in order to give my son a proper language model and hope to come close to the kind of modeling that speaking children receive. Um, it's not an overnight thing. It takes many, many thousands of hours for children to hear verbal speech and begin to imitate it. And when they do begin to imitate it, they don't just start writing sonnets and <laughs> reciting them spontaneously. They usually are babbling, um, kind of making sounds just for fun. And at first that's what Otter did using the app. Uh, he'd pick a button that he liked the sound of and he would just tap it for fun. And it, that did not worry me in the least because the coach app had explained very clearly that this is the equivalent of babbling. This will happen, it's not a bad thing and it's all part of the journey.
So some resources to share. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to learn more about Provoke and Provoke Coach, go to our product page. I'm not sure if you are familiar with the Assistive Wear website, but there you will find the products and also some information about the products. Also some blog posts, but more in-depth in depth explanation of these apps. Um, and then you can apply for a professional license on our website. Just pick up your phones right now and you can uh, grab the link with the um, QR code. And you'll get a free one year professional license. And we'll contact you at the end of the year. And if you're still interested, we'll add another year on. And also... Oh, and you can share that as well. You can share that link with your colleagues. Um, yeah. And uh, everyone yeah. is welcome. Mm -hmm. And something other fun to share is that we are at this point, today is today, today, 17th, I think. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we started our discount period. So from April 16th till 23, because of Autism Acceptance Month, we have a discount uh, on all our products. So not only on Proloco, also on Proloco to go, Proloco for text, Keyboard and Patello. So mm -hmm. please take a look at our website and see what the uh, um, what the discounts means and how it works. So I think this was just a fun slide to add uh, to the presentation. Pam, were there any questions that we now immediately need to answer? I didn't check the chat yet. But, um... I uh, just wanted to check one thing. I, it, does anyone have any questions at this time while I look for an updated answer for Sarah? I had a question um, about, so you had mentioned that when the schools get this um, program, that they're able to share it with um, like others that are um, mm -hmm. on the child's team. Mm -hmm. um, is this something, so I primarily work with uh, children where we're doing insurance funding for devices. Mm -hmm. Is that something that would carry over for this as well? Yeah, uh, let me grab the link for you from our website and put it into the... Uh... So it's if you get a, an, I, an iPad with Proloco funding for one child, um, they can still share Proloco with everyone in their team. Mm, and there is also, I think, Pam, there is, uh, a, because it's a subscription and there's a subscription for a longer period of time. So you can get can get funding for that app. But Pam is looking for the information website. And if you ever have questions about funding and how to do that and those kind of things, uh, and no, Xander also knows a lot about it, but you can also reach out to our support team so they can share the information with you. You may hear in the field that apps that have a subscription are hard to get funding for, but we also have the experience that it's actually possible to get funding for it. And there's um, a way that we organize it so it's easier to get it funded. But the sharing with the all the people, that's whatever Proloco subscription you have, uh, you can share with the people around you. Did you share? Oh, you shared the link in the chat. Yeah. I was looking for a pop-up, but of course it's in the chat. <laughs> Sometimes people ask, is there a limit on how many you can share it with? No, there's not a limit. Okay. And then I have a second question also. Um, so um, one of the teams that I'm on, we're seeing a lot of kids that need um, alternate access methods. Mm -hmm. Is this something that can um, work with like, uh, um, like uh, Bluetooth enabled switches or joysticks? Really, I would I would say that the better option is Prolo Cortico because of the built-in scanning uh, support that's right in Prolo Cortico. It's a really hardy, really um, strong, stable, reliable, which is so important. Um, Prolo Quo 
probably um, would be best for someone who didn't have complex body, who didn't have the alternative access means. Although I did see Prolo Co being used with the um, Hiru uh, at the recent ATIA conference. I just want to go to, yeah. And so, I, it blows me away. Yeah. Prolo Co and Prolog to Go can be used with iGaze uh, in combination with the accessibility of Apple itself. And mm -hmm. uh, so I would definitely advise you to dive into that because it's pretty amazing. Um, so it makes eye gaze, if you have an eye gaze bar, it makes eye gaze possible uh, with the accessibility features of Apple. So dive into that because it's interesting to see the worlds or the changes in there. Um, okay, I'm looking at the clock. <coughs> Sorry. And we have 15 minutes left for a case study and which I actually think fits to all the questions you asked before. So I think that's a, that's a good thing. So we're gonna talk about Michael on his AC journey. Oh, Michael, he's not Michael, Why? he's Matthew, but it doesn't matter, Matthew on his AC journey. Um, and here you see two pictures of Matthew. And you can also see on the left picture, you see Amanda. You may recognize her from the videos and the reels and the Facebook lives from our company. Um, and this is actually Matthew's story. So Matthew is now 20 years old. He has expressive of speech. He's non-speaking. And he started speech therapy at the age of four, which is 16 years ago. And he started with a Dynafox 5 uh, before the age of five. Um, and it was personalized. Matthew and the family learned sign language, and at that point, school was not using it. In 2011, the iPad with Prolog to go came, and then it was the age of nine. And with consistently used with support from family, the speech therapist in school, uh, he used it till 2022. The only thing is there were lots of customizations. Uh, his vocabulary grew, but also his literacy skills grew. Um, he had Prolog to go at 8 by 12 crescendo with a lot of extra folds and words. And as Amanda said, the vocabulary felt molded. So when we talked about folds into folds into folds, sidesteps, etc., this is how his vocabulary was built. And uh, use became less because of customizations, meant you actually couldn't find the words anymore. And then at some point he left school. And with the lack of school routine and lack of use, it became less, or he used it less and less. And then in 2023, Proloquo was introduced. Um, he uses now word prediction. His literacy skills are still developing. He loves grammar. He thinks it's easy to use, to use the grammar reflections in Proloquo. And it was easy to share with the support team. And as Matthew says, um, you can break it. It's um, You can add to words, but not mix it up as they did with Prolog to go. Kind of a short summary of where he is right now. So my question is, and I think it actually fits the question that Sarah asked before, Matt, you still need some personal vocabulary, like the football teams he likes. Um, and the question is, where would you add these words and why? So you can write it down in the chat. I can't open the chat with my mouse pen, so you need to do that if people write it down. Or you can just share it with us, how would you do this? Without seeing seeing the home screen, seeing the folders, I would look for a folder that has similar vocabulary. Maybe it's sports is kind of where my brain is going. And then I would put those words there um, versus traditionally, I'll be honest, I probably would have created a folder that said like my favorite sports teams or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we would have put it there. Right. And the advantage of using a folder that already exists in Prolo Quo is knowing that it already has so many different. Now, I happen to know that Matthew is in Australia. Uh, 
So Matthew's concept of football is a little bit different than mine. Um, so I'm going to use a U.S. football. I would, you know, look under in a sports folder. I would, um, I could add a folder, you know, my sports teams. Um, or I could just use the word football and tap it and add related words to football. Um, I would probably... If it's a conversation starter folder, I like that I idea a lot. Barbara, can you um, hook up your um, iPad again and just show um, how to? We're going to be careful. We're not going to call it added a button. We're calling we're calling it adding a button because you can't really edit. You can add. Um, so there's a couple of different play things, but the bottom line for me is, is I would ask Matthew, where do you think we should put it and work with Matthew because, and offer Matthew some different options. Would you like to put it here? Would you like to put it there? And whatever Matthew wants is the way I would go. So there's actually a sports and recreation folder. Oh, I see sports. And you, and I see sports, that's not a folder. And this gives you the opportunity to... Could you click on football? You're oh, using a, um, an, an American vocabulary. Okay. Now, do you see something? Barbara's in the edit mode now. And again, mm -hmm. there's those pluses for adding a button. But do you see, Barbara, would you click on the three dots on the football in the first yes. column? How did you get to edit mode? Okay, let's let's go from there. So I went into the folder sports and recreation and I went into sports and there it is actually the same as it is in Verlope to go. Is the there pencil. You find a pencil. Mm -hmm. It asked me to enter a code. A pin number. And now, right? I, and now she's And once it. I click a plus, I can add something. I can add a button. And the same on the second. And the, the, the axes that are here are the spaces for us to, to add uh, vocabulary if we missed it. But what I also wanted to, what we should show Pam, is that if you have like, we add, let's say we add a word team. I think this is done. So we have a team. 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 It will give me a list of related words over here. It is possible to also add all the football teams over there. Mm -hmm. We can add it as buttons with pictures, but we can also add them as related words. So what are the options for adding images? And what do you mean with options? But maybe that's my... Uh... You can add photographs okay. and you can choose... But what Proloco is going to ask you first is, what concept do you mean of the word? Make sure that we're offering you the appropriate image or that meaning of the word. So Perfect. which meaning? The fruit or the color? Or, Barbara, tap on the plus sign. And there you go. You can. These are your other options. You can choose an image from your camera um, rolls, you can take a photograph and add that. Look at your screen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and use that. Now, now, Barbara, if you'll, um, in editing, I wanted just to show what those three dots means. So if you click on the three dots on football, mm -hmm. which symbol do you prefer? So we can give you some different options on using symbols. Same with cricket, same with rugby. So whenever you see that symbol, you know that you have the option to look at those and, and take different uh Take you know, take a different choice. Mm -hmm. 
So it's pretty easy to edit, pretty straightforward. Barbara, can you just go into the settings really quick? I don't know if, how familiar you guys are with the settings in Prolo Portico, but there's deep, deep options and choices. Here we have Barbara's account, her team, um, personal information, speech. This is about the user. Um, speech, you can change speed and pitch. You can add pronunciations. You can have speak message window only. So she's added some pronunciations. Uh, you could change the skin tone for all the buttons. Team members. And I can add team mm -hmm. members. Oh, I'm waiting. You're waiting. And here we're giving a choice. So, so if I have a team member, mm -hmm. yeah, you can Sarah. choose between few. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we're going to say the same thing. Sarah, if you wanted to invite the um, teacher, but you don't want the teacher to edit, you just want her to be able to have that vocabulary on her device, you make her a viewer because you're the admin. Or if you want um, somebody to be able to edit the uh, vocab user's vocabulary, you can make them the editor. So you don't have everybody making changes. Okay, let's stop sharing. Thank you, Sarah. Say okay. Thank you, Sarah. Bye bye. So, what do you think, Amanda, Michelle, Sarah H? Any questions? Chandra? Do you, I have a question. Um, what other languages is Proloquo available in other than English? English. No. Just English. English only. Are they English. are they moving to is that on their to-do list? I don't think it's on the to-do to-do list yet. Okay. Um Proloquo continues. I think that's really important for us to say too, Barbara, is Prolo Cortico isn't going anywhere. It's still a wonderful, wonderful AAC app, um, especially for students who need access to Spanish, French, or Dutch, or alternative access, um, which we mentioned earlier. And maybe also good to share but you probably know is that it's not a way of just translating English to another language. There's a whole research behind it. And also the way that English is built is different than Spanish, than Dutch, than French. So it's not something like we put it in Google Translate and we have another vocabulary. That's not how it works. So for now, we're focusing, still focusing on Proloquo and making sure that we um, even make it better and make product for coach better and that it fits the user's need and listen to our users. So whenever you have feedback or find things that are have questions, please reach out. Um, I shared the email address here because we are happy to listen to everyone and also uh, receive feedback about the things that we, we are doing. There were so, a lot of changes I, made already to the science vocabulary um, based on feedback from educators, science educators in the classroom. And uh, okay, I think uh, within the time, so I want to say thank you. Thank you for joining our presentation. Yes, thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for bringing this information to, well, and not just Oregon, obviously, because we had people on here from Michigan. <laughs> um, yes, Sarah, I, I also like that there's not a ton of layers, and, and I, I appreciate the concept of breaking an app because I, I have seen, I've seen a lot of apps this year, <laughs> and 
the amount of customization um, is is astounding. It really is. It's really amazing. And you know, if if you need that, then great. Um, but as mm -hmm. far as everybody being able to use something as a team, um, and also just it having a, a standard motor plan. Um, it, it does seem much easier to to learn and use for teachers and and whatnot. I agree. I agree. You can tell we're pretty excited about it. Pretty proud of the work. But does anybody else have any or want to see anything else in the app before uh, we? Before we go, I mean for a free license and no, also for parents, if they want to try it, you have a one month free trial. And now in the discount period, oh, I have two months free trial. So, and then you can trial ProLoco and ProLoco Coach for free. And share so, it during the trial. The trial includes yeah. everything. It's, it's yeah. a full featured free trial. Oh, wonderful.